Okay, let's go ahead and get started on Jimi Hendrix. One cool dude. And I think I'll include the hand that's in the photograph as well. Maybe, maybe that necklace, maybe a little piece, like part of the collar. And so it's gonna be a larger drawing. I'm gonna start the top of his head up, up here somewhere, if you can see that. Let me pull camera out a little bit. So somewhere up here, and I'm going to just take measurements with my pencil and thumb to try to find relationships of things. So the top of his hair to the bottom of his chin has one unit of distance, and that'll lead me down to about where I'm going to, about where the bottom of the arm that the actual part that's showing will be. So basically the chin is probably about the halfway point. So maybe a little bit further. So I'm just roughing in this distance. To give me an idea of where to place things. And let's see. Let's see the width of his hair to the length of his face and hair. They're about equal. So now I'm going to do the thirds of the face, and he's got a head tilt, his head is tilted back a little bit, and the camera might be a little bit below his face as well. So his bottom third will be quite larger than the other thirds of the face. And let's see, so that's the hairline roughly. And it looks like the bottom third is almost like halfway between the hairline, excuse me, between the hairline and the bottom of the chin. take another measurement. I'm going to take a measurement off this. I have two images up. One uh, of the whole picture, then another one to the left of it is zoomed in so I can see the details in the face. So I'm going to use that one because I was using the other one to measure the face. I'm going to use the larger picture so I can get a better read. I'm just building the structure a little bit of the nose, trying to get a sense of where the bottom lies on the face. Then I'll take more measurements. And this is sort of like a cylinder right here, this whole mouth structure, especially in that perspective. 
and it curves around. So I want to make sure I got that. It's a little bit of a cast shadow. I don't have to put too much detail right now. Just, just want to stay in the basic shapes. Take a measurement here. Bottom of the chin to the bottom of the nose. Compare that from bottom of the nose to where it falls on the face. And it comes almost to the hairline. Pretty dang close. So that's probably about right. This is all going to be blurry. His hairline is probably actually a little bit further up, but his hair is um, sitting and blocking that view and it's kind of very soft. You can't really see a hard, um, a very hard line for the hairline. So we'll just go with that. Let's find the top of the lips. Actually, let's kind of build up a little bit of a structure of this whole area. Before I get into that, this, into the mouth, I'm going to find the width of the face compared to the length, which is very, very important to get correct. I'm starting on the cheekbones, going straight across, horizontal, and then comparing that from the bottom of the chin to where it strikes on the picture, which is about right here. So it's pretty narrow. I might have it too wide already. So that helps a lot right there. I already can make some changes. I'm going to compare it again just to double check because sometimes it's really hard to hold steady. Yeah, that's about right. So I'll make that adjustment. Let's just pull this out, pull that out. It comes down, comes over here. There. I'm just looking at these shapes and trying to map them in very generically. And there's this shadow shape on his cheek. And I'm holding, I held my pencil up to the image to get the angle and then brought it down to the paper. So I hold it up, find that angle, and then bring the pencil down. And that help, kind of helps you find those angles. So I need to make this side smaller than this side. So it looks like I'm going to come in kind of cut away to make that adjustment. Because I was looking at the outside of the nostril here and this distance. And I was comparing that 
to this distance uh, here. And since I just made those adjustments moving things over, I'm going to check again on the width to the length like I did before. That's pretty good. And the peak of his cheekbone I'm going to take a horizontal line and find where it strikes across the nose. And it comes right across this nostril here. So the peak of the, like his cheekbone, comes right here. Same on the other side. I'm going to find the angle of the jaw. Bring it down. That's pretty close. I'll fix it a little bit here. And we can't see much information in the shadow side over here. So we'll have to either blow this all out in shadow like it is in the photo, or we can uh, manipulate uh, some of the edges to how we think it might be. So now I'm going to find the top of the lips. I need to find a lip so I know where to place this, the hinge, the hinge right here, the jaw and the angle. I need sort of like a reference point being the, uh, the lips would really help me. So I'm looking for the top of the lips. I think that's probably about it. And his upper lip is going to be thicker than the bottom. It doesn't, they look pretty equal to me, but I think I'll just go ahead and make the top a little bit bigger. And that's because he's in perspective. And generally in that perspective, we'll see the bottom lip as being slightly uh, thinner than the upper lip. corner of the mouth would be right here somewhere. Take a line straight across. And might have the nose too wide. It feels too wide. So I'm going to trim it down. Taking a parallel line from the corner of the mouth and finding where it's, it is in relationship to the outside of the nostril. And same with the other side. It's about the same. I might have the lips, the corners too low. Let me kind of Try to map the top of the lip here.
actually take some of this these old lines out. Checking to see if it's parallel or uh, on the same horizontal line. Hmm. So then, the, on the bottom of the lip, there's a shelf right underneath it. It's about right there. And there's a little bit of a rhythm for the chin right here. might just lose all this information of the uh, chin in shadow that would probably look pretty uh, good that way. I'm going to find the angle of the jaw from the, the hinge. Something like that. And now I'm going to find where this hinge is in relationship to the lips by holding my pencil up again as a horizontal line. comes across right about here. So I was pretty close. And then this will just be lost in shadow later. So we'll leave the face alone for a little bit and identify like maybe where his hand will lie uh, in relationship to the face. So let's work on the hand. So the first thing I want to do is find the distance from the bottom of the chin like right here to the top of the hand. And I'm going to take a measurement with my pencil and thumb. Let me zoom, let me use the bigger picture. It would be much easier for me. So the top of the, the hand, almost like the finger, to the bottom of the chin. So I have that now, and I'm holding that up to the bottom of the chin, and it strikes right in the middle, middle of the upper lip. So about right there. Come down to here, make a mark, and now I'm going to find that finger stops right about here. So I'll draw this parallel line, and that's where we have the first knuckle, right there. Okay, I'm going to take a break. It's been, um, well, yeah, I'll go ahead and take a break. I usually go on longer, but it's probably best if I take a break. It will, it will continue on this hand and uh, mapping the basic big shape of the hand when I come back. So we found the top of the knuckle uh, relating to the bottom of the chin, and that was really good. And uh, find the angle of that first knuckle, the first finger. And it goes about right there. Now I'm going to find, uh, using a parallel line, I'm going to find where this knuckle is on this side. And find, when I hold the pencil up to the image, I'm going to come up and find where along the face uh, the pencil strikes on that parallel line from the top of the knuckle. And it's somewhere about right here. 
So that gives me a, an idea of where the next angle of the hand will fall. And I'll take another angle with the pencil, bring it down, got really close. It's always nice when you guess pretty close to the angle. And let's see, now I'm gonna find where his wrist angle is, the joint, basically. And I can't really use the parallel line on that one because it's way off to the side, somewhere over here. Uh, I could try. Hmm. So what I'm gonna use is, I think I'll use comparative measuring. I'm gonna measure that knuckle to that wrist angle um, joint and compare that to the distance of the face. So whatever it takes to find comparative measuring Okay, so it's about this distance right here. So it comes about right there. And I might, I think I'll just make it a little bit longer. I should probably recheck it. Let me just recheck it. It's not as important as a face getting the uh, features right. Cause you're not like, if I get the hand off a little bit people aren't usually gonna be like, you know what, that doesn't look like his hand. Unless it's really bad. So when I measured it the second time, I actually had it up a little bit further. So about right there, that's good enough. Take another angle, come down. About like that. It's collar, or not the collar, but the cuff on his shirt. I'm just gonna map in the big shape, the big block shape of the hand, going across those two knuckles, and coming down the next two, roughly. And then it comes in again. Something like this, and something like that. <laughs> so I'm gonna check the distance, like right here. And I'm gonna compare that to this. bottom of the chin, almost to the bottom of the nose, a little bit further, is, so I have a little bit long. So I'll bring this up. Bring this over. So that gives me a very basic pattern shape of his hand. And that will help me immensely when I do the shadow mapping on the in the knuckles and in the back of his hand. I'm taking a parallel line right now to see where, see where this line right here falls in relationship. And it's actually comes down here, right across that nostril and we're straight down. gives me a little bit better placement of the hand. And before we said this was about halfway. Okay. So I'll just make my adjustment here.
So I kept it really light. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. I hope you can. But that's the placement of the hand. So what's next? So we know the basic structure of the face. Still feel like the sides are too wide. So I'm making my little adjustments. And then I'm gonna measure that cheek again. It's really important to get the, the width of his face in relationship to the length correct. Real important. Okay. Looks pretty close. So let's put in his neck on this side. I'm trying to think of like how I want to design it. Like I don't think I want his shoulders and this whole side of the arm and all the folds. I think that's might take away too much or just I don't know I think it would be kind of cool if I had his hand here like I do and then instead of this is floating around in space I can have it connected to like this shape of the collar that sits over here and then you can have like almost like maybe just a line drawing of the collar on this side and that line maybe fading out and off down here and then gotta work in that the medallion he's got that looks so cool it's like a sun god or something that's pretty neat work that in here chain collar collar connects that would this whole area would be all connected together chain up here collar and then maybe a line of it. it just falls off. So let me map in the collar here. Still working very basic shapes. It was a little bit, actually that goes further down. sort of the cast shadow on the neck I'm kind of placing it in a very non-committal way right now
then the clavicle doing a horizontal line actually it's at a little bit of an angle comes off the knuckle about like that parallel from the clavicle where the clavicle meets the collar on the other side and it looks like the parallel line comes about right here and I can double check that from that point to the corner of this mouth find that angle and then bring it down to my picture here and right on the money as far as I can tell anyway so make that angle of the collar most of it we're going to lose in shadow and this collar here sits right here come straight across picks up over here and we'll find that angle bring it down something like that <laughs> oh drawing is so much fun let's see it's like a puzzle put a curve on it how does that look yeah okay that looks good and the picture is colorist like pulled over to the side and all like disheveled kind of cool look like they're like Jimmy wake up man time for your photo shoot he's like what oh man let me put my shirt on or no he probably didn't even have a shirt he just answered the door without any clothes on they're like dude put a shirt on this is like 1966, you, you have to wear clothes. So, bring this down. So I'm just going around the collar and mapping in shapes. Like looking, trying to identify the shape and then trying to mimic it, basically. And I was thinking of this line just falling off not being very important something like that instead of like doing all the shadows and stuff I, I'm and I think I'm not sure yet but I think I'll just have it um, just like a line drawing and probably as I go down the drawing this way, the intensity of the tone that I put in the shadows will be lighter. And so it'll like, I'm trying to draw all the attention into into his face. But I still want to get the hand in because that looks really neat. So I'm going to check the width of this hand to his face, compare it, make sure I don't have it too big. I'm going to make sure basically that I didn't make his hand too big. And the photograph looks a little odd anyway. It's almost like the lens has a little bit of a fish eye going on. So it might be skewed by the camera lens but I can see that I actually made it a little bit too big. So now's the time to do the correction. Ain't no big deal at this point. And I'm going to take the distance from here to here and compare that to his face. That 
comes up to about right here. So check here. Whoa. Okay. Way off. That. So let's check that again. Way, way off. So that's an awesome opportunity to make a correction. looks a little bit off to you anyway at this angle because the board is sitting like that so anything down here is going to be larger than over here but even with that I still look like his hand was was off so I'm going to check this length So I'm about ready to take another break. I'm trying to take more breaks because I think it helps a lot. So in class we take uh, t breaks every 20 minutes, and uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to like do that at home as well to keep keep vigilant with like the uh, measuring. So I, I really want to get uh, more mindful of making measurements and after a while I think what happens is it trains your eye to see correct more correctly and then you don't have to use comparative measuring as much um, but I, I think it's really good to take breaks so I don't get uh, fatigued and just want to get through it you know what I mean like kind of like ah I just want to I want to finish it so much. Instead, I like I just like take take a deep breath, take a break, come back with fresh eyes. <laughs> so, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I see I need to work on some things in his face again. So I'm just gonna let me see if I can get in a little close for you. So. I am going to take some more measurements and, and try to really get locked down on the shapes in the face a little bit more. Let's see. So so he has that head tilt and I think I have the nose a little too long. I'm not sure, but I'm going to take some measurements. Comparative measuring. Uh, slightly, maybe slightly off. Let's take this out.
Hmm. This is kind of hard. Let's let me think here. Let me pull this back out. Sometimes it's a little hard to concentrate. Let's take a deep breath. <sighs> and let's see where we are. Okay. So I'm pretty positive. Ah, okay. I don't know how that happened. Hairline about right there. So now I'm going to take, I'm going to find out where the eyebrows are, hopefully. Okay, so bottom of the chin to about right here should be equal to bottom of the nose. It doesn't work either. It might, let's see, I don't know. This can get frustrating sometimes. You you know that it's off, but you don't know where. And then I'm thinking how off, like how much, how much can I get away with it being off with that? Like, you know, before it starts messing with the person's likeness. But I'm really, really, trying to get it so let me try to find the bottom of the the eyes in relationship to the nostrils so what I'm doing is I uh, I couldn't figure out certain distances certain areas um, didn't satisfy me so I'm looking for other other things to measure so I'm looking at this distance from the corner of the eye to the nostril. And I'm gonna bring that corner straight across to the other side. It's about right there. And I'm gonna create this sunglass shape of the eyes. It's a lot of problem solving and drawing. It's that's what makes it so much fun. Sometimes it kicks your ass, and sometimes you do a really good job. And it's and all the ass kickings make the uh, make the success even more fun, <laughs> more exciting. As if it was. If drawing was easy, uh, it just wouldn't be fun. It has to have some sort of challenge with it. Anything you do for fun has to have a level of difficulty that makes it challenging. So I'm doing the sweep of the eyes, kind of trying to lock things in. desperately trying to figure this out I think I'll take I'll take a measurement from here to here and compare it here and see where it strikes down there basically I'm trying to see if I got the length of his nose correct he isn't it's in a uh, perspective that makes it shorter than it actually is. And I know, at least for me, I know that I try, my brain tries to get rid of perspective and make everything flat and uninteresting. <laughs> 
Bring the bridge down a little bit. Still okay with the corner of the eye, I think. a lot better. So I'm going to take that width again and just make sure that I got it in good relation to its length because it's so important. check the bottom of the chin I'm like super paranoid width again is it really that off wow okay so apparently I have it really too wide so what I'm going to do for another check, for yet another check, is right here in the middle of the lips, there's a point, and then I'm going to check this angle from the outside of the nostril to that point. I'm going to find that angle. Find the other side. And it matches. And now I can see that it definitely is a little too wide. checked it again, you know? Jeez. Someday I'll be so much faster and I won't be a, won't have to do so much checking and rechecking but it's really nice to have that um, have that information of how to do it how to how to check yourself 
with comparative measuring and plumb lines. Learning that was such a big deal. Really helped a lot. And it's such an easy thing to do. I mean, it's not going to solve all the problems, but it'll get you there, man. It'll get you in the ballpark for sure. Let's see. Mapping in some of these shadow shapes. Remember, we lost this chin. It'll be lost in the shadow. Eventually. His hair in relationship to the outside in the corner right here, about like that. Let's see. That angle, let's get the other side. Work on the neck a little bit. to bring this line down like that. Taking our time. I feel myself getting a little anxious, a little impatient, and it's good to notice it so you can control it. Decide whether or not you want to be anxious, want to be impatient. 
Yeah, I don't. <laughs> so I've decided decided not to be. I'm gonna map in a little bit on the the knuckles, and the knuckles have a rhythm, kind of like a curve that goes like that. So much information in the hand will be lost in shadow, which I really like. It really creates, it's just a neat look where you don't see all the details. Life is full of so many details. It's nice to see a, a drawing or a painting where it's um, a lot of mystery in it. I just really like that because it allows, allows your brain to connect the missing pieces in a painting yourself and it almost feels like you're a part of it in a weird way you're part of the um, the equation of the painting or the drawing you're being asked to fill in the blank basically and there's something satisfying looking at something like that where your brain gets to almost use its creativity to finish the painting or finish the drawing. And that's why I like this kind of uh, drawing and painting um, over like uh, hyper realism even though I have a lot of respect for it it just I prefer lost edges to um, very sharp edges everywhere. It's my personal preference and I just think it's really a lot more fun to look at. It's a little bit of much about the hand. I studied it a little bit. I was using uh, Bridgman uh, a couple years ago. Does he have a cross on his hand? <laughs> I, think, I think he has either scarring or a very light tattoo right here. I think it's a cross. That's funny. I'll have to Google that later. Maybe on the next break I'll Google it and make sure I didn't know he had something there. Maybe he just drew something on himself. I don't know. Or some some uh, groupy chick drew on him <laughs> while he was hammered. <laughs> That's weird. I didn't I didn't see that before. It's kind of cool. Put this button in down here. I'm going to try to design this a little bit more interesting. Can you even see it on there? Yeah, okay. You got, I got you in uh, the frame. That's good. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take another break, and uh, I'm gonna Google that about his wrist to see if he, or I'm just gonna Google to see if uh, he has any tattoos. I'm kind of interested in that. So um, yeah, there you go, and um, I'll be right back. Bye. A little bit of coffee, and I see some things I need to change. Uh, actually quite quite off 
Hmm. I don't want to change it, but let's let me zoom in and into the face here so you can see it pretty clearly. So I I remember thinking I didn't have his head tilted back enough. Like I was having a difficult time in this area. And now I'm trying to decide whether I should make the big changes or not. Because I think the lips have to be moved up and the nose shortened. So it's kind of a bummer. But it'll be worth it. So let's go ahead and Oh, I hate doing this, but let's go ahead and go for it and erase it out. I drew it once, I can draw it again. I always try to remember that. And this is the time to make the corrections. I keep trying to remind myself. It'll be worth it. It'll be worth it later. So I think the nose should come up kind of like on this line. The tip of the nose. And this is why it's really good to take a break, because when you come back, your eyes are uh, rested. They had a break, and when you come back, you can see things that need to be corrected. And it's just so important to take a break and not spend one large, huge block of time on the drawing or painting. Like Step away from it every once in a while give yourself a break and you come back you'll come back with more strength more insight a stronger stronger eye brain is rested a little bit so that looks a lot better a lot better to me I already I like it already so now do I need to move the lips up I think I do. So I already know where the corners are. I just need to move a little closer to the bottom of the nose. So I'll make those adjustments. I used to get really frustrated with myself, really hard on, hard on um, myself when I make a mistake, and that doesn't help anything. <laughs> it just makes everything, it just compounds the problem. And realizing that it is what it is, like uh, whatever skill level I'm at at the time, it is what it is, and gives me an opportunity to learn and that's what that's the best part about it all is the learning and you can't learn if you already know how and that's where for me at least that's where the joy comes in is learning how to do something I'm, I'm totally addicted to uh, insight and learning And drawing really gives you an opportunity to learn something, learn you know different aspects of how to see something. It's just really fun, and I just got to remember that that it's you know when I make a mistake, it's it's all right. So I got the lips moved up to where I want them. It needs to be a little bit more of a shelf, like a little stair step in the corners. So I really want to 
concentrate on getting that to look good. Just trying to map in that little mustache goatee that he's got going. It's really thin. I'm trying to create a little bit of a variation in that shape instead of just like a big like a one line representing the whole thing so there's like little breaks and and lines that cut through it because it's a pretty thin uh, goatee mustache I think one of the hard things about going through a, like a drawing program, learning how to draw, or maybe even just on your own, at least for me, the, uh, one of the hard things is accepting where uh, my skill level is at the time. Because I, I think most people, and myself included, is like we're always looking uh, towards a little bit further into uh, the skill level that we want and it, rather than accepting like where we are currently and I think that's natural and that's what we have to do but it can kind of get out of hand a little bit uh, emotionally because you're like always looking to be a little bit better and when you don't hit it it kind of creates um, uh, pain basically uh, uh, you know you can throw a fit whether that's outright where you're throwing something or you're just the, the voices um, the self-talk is really harsh like you know on you're just really difficult uh, you you become a difficult person to work with when uh, you're so you're difficult when you're so hard on yourself so basically I'm just saying it's um there's a lot of self-awareness involved and uh, just chilling out and knowing that uh, it's a process of learning and you'll get there. So I like the shape of the nose and I got the little um, cast shadow underneath and that's really important because that'll help the nose come off, come off the page in like a three-dimensional uh, uh, look and just kind of going around this area trying to look at the different shapes of the shadow that looks so much better to me I don't know if it looks better to you but it really looks like his head is now on that tilt backwards and we're looking up at him it's so much better. I'm glad I, um, I'm glad I saw that and had the guts to make the correction. Uh, let's see. Now, uh, what should I do now? I think I'll work on the eyes a little bit. It has really nice 
eyes and they're kind of like the, the outside corners actually are down from the inside corners so I'll have to move that so I'll just take those out and these lines the rhythm lines was just to get me in the ballpark and so now I don't need them so much and I can make my adjustments as the drawing calls for So I'm going to put that corner on this line. I'm going to run all the way across so I can make the other side match up. He's got really thick, heavy eyelids, so I want to make sure I do them justice. So I'm just walking around in the eye area and looking for the shapes and then trying to create those shapes. I mean, it's really nothing more to it than that um, at this point. Uh, I mean, I have studied uh, a little bit of eye structure and, and that's playing into it a little bit too. Um, so like I would recommend just doing eye anatomy where you just do the basic shapes and stuff like that. And uh, Stan Prokopinko, uh, proko.com, he has really good videos um, on doing eyes. So those are those are highly recommended, or you can just look up um, on Google uh, some eye studies like for drawing. There's so much information out there nowadays online that it's it's really, 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 really helpful for us artists to get a grasp on on the subject. It's really cool wasn't that long ago we didn't have hardly anything online and now YouTube's just blowing up and so many people are sharing it's, a, it's really just a awesome time to be alive and have all this information at our fingertips so I put a little highlight in there and I'm gonna harden up this edge a little bit it's kind of a cast shadow mixed in with a form shadow Let's go to the other eye and get that one looking pretty decent. And maybe if I zoom in a little bit more for you, let me see. So I went in with like a little bit of a hard edge right here because I'm thinking maybe like a cast shadow off the eyelid and that edge will be a little bit harder 
a little bit more firm than this edge of the uh, eyelid where it's softer. So I'm thinking of whether the, the edges, the lines are going to be soft, uh, firm, hard, or just completely lost. <laughs> like this edge right here, uh, for example, is uh, will be the cast shadow on the neck and it's going to be very crisp. Whereas this one um, on the chin will be very soft. And this one of the chin you don't even see, it's totally lost. So there's different uh, lines and ways to think about the edges that make the drawing uh, interesting and come, al come to life, I think. Let's go over here and do the other eyelid on the bottom. Let's take that out. So pretty soon we're going to go in and put tone, a single tonal mass is what they call it, where everything that is in shadow or dark color, like so even the hair that's in light, I'm going to make it all one tone, whether it's in the shadow or in light, and then everything else that's in shadow is going to be one single tone. So we're coming up on that stage pretty soon. And I just want to clean up some of these shapes, like this eyebrow. And because once we go into the tone, it becomes more difficult to make corrections. And we'll still make corrections even after we put the tone in. But just know that it's a little bit more time consuming once you have the tone in. So I'm trying to get the drawing to the best place it possibly can be before we go into that next stage. And once we put the tone in, it'll help us to see, uh, because it's more information, then we'll have more, uh, we'll have more information to make uh, better decisions with. Uh, once that tone's in, then we can see like, oh, that's this or that, it looks a little off, and we can make adjustments but there'll be uh, minor adjustments, hopefully, compared to um, if we didn't take the time while the drawing's in this uh, lay-in stage. So it's really important to uh, be patient and try to take advantage of each stage before you move on to the next. And I should walk the talk because I don't do that, but I should. <laughs> and I'm trying to right now because I tend to just get excited. Cause I'm like, I, when it starts to look, just starts to look good, I, I get excited and I just want to like go into the tone and and uh, and usually that creates a difficulty and disaster or near disaster. And if I could just chill out a little bit and be patient so much of that grief will be uh, unnecessary <laughs> so 
So he's got a highlight on the nose. About right there. I think I'll go ahead and take another break before I go into uh, the tone. So yeah, just I'm taking, um, being very patient and step by step, and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back after a very long break. Uh, it wasn't five minutes. I actually ran out of time that day, and I had to go to work. And also yesterday, a couple of things came up and I just couldn't get to it. Uh, but today, this morning, I actually have time, so I'm just going to jump right back into it. Uh, hopefully the drawing hasn't gotten cold for me. Uh, I still kind of remember where I left off and how I was thinking about it. Uh, but yeah, I'm just, you know, just doing the best I can with the time I have and trying not to uh, worry about it too much. But I am happy that I got time right now, so let's um, go ahead and take advantage of it. And I still haven't gone into the tone yet, and I think a couple times I said I was about to or I was going to after the next break, but uh, I still haven't done it. And I'm really trying my best to uh, take my time and, uh, and be very uh, vigilant and the lay-in phase and it's kind of a trying that out experimenting with doing that instead of jumping right into the tonal phase and see how that works for me so I I haven't uh, drawn any yet this morning and going right into it hopefully it'll be okay just making slight adjustments to what I had before making sure I line up those eyes as best I can there's no highlight in this eye I can put one in if I want to but I don't think I will lights coming from this direction so I was, I was thinking about making this video instead of one one long big video to break it up maybe in the parts <clears throat> as I um, make it during the week but I don't think that would work out too well I think it's best just to load it up as one uh, one piece because first I was thinking well maybe as I you know I'll load up like maybe the the first half um, you know maybe I only got the lay-in phase done uh, over a course of a couple of days because of time constraints and then I can just load the video but I actually have to edit the video which takes uh, t uh, some time uh, to do so it would probably just be best if I just waited and just load it, edit it all at once <coughs> excuse me so that's probably what I'll do work on the shadow shapes and the uh, casting off the hand draw in that um, necklace he's got too that's gonna look pretty interesting I hope <laughs> it's 
So I think I'll start with a kind of an oval, almost circle. Because it's sitting on his chest. this angle. I don't have to get extremely detailed on it because <clears throat> I want most of the attention to go right to the face and as we go down the drawing things get lighter and less attention absorbing. I'm a little nervous, so I gotta take some calming, deep breath. <laughs> Jeez, can't even talk. Sometimes I get really, really nervous on video, and I'm getting better at it, but sometimes it, I can really feel it, the uh, anxiety. <clears throat> and it really shouldn't. It's just, you know, hanging out with you guys. Just drawing and enjoying the morning. Drawing this crazy little face. Looks like he's screaming. That's kind of cool. kind of filling in this tiny little cast shadow on this relief kind of thing. This has got more of a angle to it. It's a weird necklace. Let's see. So I got that one, got that one. Let's move this one. Something like that. 
I don't know, I'm not gonna do it justice, that's for sure. It looks handmade as well. It's really cool looking. But, this drawing is about Jimmy, and less about this accessory. Then again, I don't know what the significance of it is. It could be something really, really significant to his personality. Just that he's wearing it, probably. Alone is pretty cool. The guy was so authentically himself. It's pretty awesome. Got a little shadow here. Probably won't do much more than that. That's probably already a little too much information, maybe. And I'm gonna connect it into that shadow when I put the tone in, so it won't feel like it's a separate piece from from Jimmy and his hand and his his face. It's all one piece one unit So I'm thinking about that shadow, a little piece of a shadow here. Zoom back out. How are we doing with this guy? Let's check some final little things. I was checking the uh, corner of the mouth, the corner of the lips in relationship to the eyes with a plumb line. Now I'm thinking about the hair shape.
So the hair shape, it's very wispy on the outside. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna use very little information in the hair. Um, I think that would be best. So let me just take measurements on the thickness, like from the hairline to the top of the hair and relate that to the face so I can get a good sense of how big to make it. And then I'm gonna do the same from the side of the cheek to the outside um, of the hair. Compare that to the face and where it lands so I can get a good sense of where that might be. I mean, it's so fine or wispy on the edges. And then it gets denser, of course, when it gets closer to the face. All right, my computer just, there you go. That's weird, I wonder why, oh, I did an update this morning, so maybe, maybe my settings got changed. It went off. Maybe after 15 minutes it goes off or something, I don't know. So let me uh, recheck that distance. That's good. And then let me try the other side. From that cheek to the outside of the hair, compare that to the face bottom of the chin comes up to about right here which means it'll be whoa Let's see bottom of the chin that is correct okay it's almost like a curl right there so that'd be kind of cool wraps around like these kind of looking for some way to stylize it kind of cool I can see how the hair is kind of wavy and kind of twisted and pulled on up at the top like it's been teased Okay, what else can I do? I noticed, let me check, but I think I got the hand a little off position. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit low, the hand in relationship to the bottom of the chin at this point it's where it's going to be and I'm okay with that so I'm going to take a break I'm going to take a shot of this so I can um, like a progress progress picture um, before I go into the tone so I can have that um, so you can look at um, a little bit more in detail in a photograph of where we are so far on this stage so I'm going to do that and I'll be right back All right, I think <laughs> I think we're finally ready to put the tone in. Ah, finally, the the fun the fun part. Ah, I just want to change. Okay, ah, tone. Let's do it. So, I'm trying to think about where the light's coming from. And 
anyway. So, single tonal mass. And I'm using the side of my pencil. And you can see it's kind of a little bit dull on the tip from using it in all these lines. And now I'm using it on the side to create uh, big, thick lines of tone like this. And while I'm doing that, I'm also rotating the pencil. And in doing so, it actually sharpens the pencil back to a nice point. And then I'll go back into the drawing and make little adjustments and little details and it'd be nice to have that pencil sharpened up again. So I'm pulling down, I'm not going back and forth, uh, I'm pulling down, lifting up off the paper, rotating the pencil a little bit and then coming back down. And then when I come into these little tight areas, I'm using more of the tip, still on the side, but closer to the, uh, the tip of the pencil. I just pushed tone right over that highlight. Didn't mean to, but I can definitely pull it back out with my eraser. Let's make it nice and to a point. Then I can use that tip of the pencil I just sharpened and redefine that highlight. And let's take this down into this shadow. So we're gonna lose some lines on purpose to help the drawing feel like all connected and with one big piece like I want it to read very uh, like it's just one big solid piece rather than there's like floating things so a lot of the lines will be lost to kind of have that uh, feel of the whole drawing being connected if that makes any sense I don't know <laughs> I'm just trying to make it look good, man. That's all I'm trying to do. Let's see, is there a shadow down here? There is. Do I need to put it? Eh. It'll probably help a little bit. did the hard work and now we just got to fill it in and have fun and play around with the different edges and um, hopefully don't have to make too many corrections I don't want you know sometimes I mean that's why I did all that hard work and it took my time because I didn't want to have to go back and fight it and hopefully our hard work will pay off and if it doesn't it doesn't but I think we have a better chance by putting in that hard work beforehand he's got a ring on his finger too I might wanna I gotta put it in I mean come on he's Jimi Hendrix so I'll come back 
after I uh, go around the drawing with all this tone. And then I'll draw in his, his cool ring. Let's go back up here. This is all in shadow, this collar. That folds over behind, lost edge. To the mouth and put, put that single tonal mass that we were talking about. Make sure I, you can see it on the. Yeah, okay. I'm just checking the camera. I'm like paranoid. Paranoid that it wasn't on. So I need to say something about the lower part of the face. Because the light is up here, it's going to hit strongest at the top of the face. And as the light goes down, uh, or like over his cheek and then down towards the chin, the light intensity will drop off and it will actually be a little, even though it's still the light side, it'll be darker down here than let's say up here. Uh, so the skin tone up here will be lighter than down here. And that's what they, I've talked about it before in the other videos, it's the egg effect. And so as you go down the face, because the light is at the top, uh, the intensity of that light will actually drop off as you go down uh, the form, down the face. So I put a little bit of tone to um, give that effect even though I, I said I was going to do a single tonal mass, but <laughs> I, got, I got ahead of myself, which I you know, often do, but um, that's what I was doing. That's why I put that tone in the light side. So I was like, ooh, yeah, I got I to gotta remember the egg effect. So let me go ahead and try to finish the um, single tonal mass, and then I'll go in and make adjustments in the, uh, the half tones or not, maybe I'll just keep working on building up this tonal mass. So right now it's, it's reading pretty good. It looks like I'm squinting down and it looks pretty interesting. Um, I think it looks like him. I hope it does because that's the reason why I was doing a famous person so I can practice making it really look like the person. So let's zoom out see how that reads so far. I'm 
Okay, so let me just continue working the darkness of the uh, the tone and reestablishing edges while I do that. I'm just darkening up the edges because once I put that tone in, it, it kind of lose its um, the power of some of the lines. So I just want to go in and reestablish them by making them a little bit darker. I wish I could have Jimi Hendrix music playing right now while I'm doing this drawing, but uh, YouTube will will take it down because of copyright copyright infringement on the music. But I would suggest uh, I, would, I would make the suggestion. Just, yeah, I can't talk. I would make the suggestion that you uh, maybe play some Hendrix while you're if you're. Uh, if you feel like you want to draw this yourself too, um, have that playing, man. That, that would be so much fun. Have some Hendrix playing while you're uh, drawing him. He's got a little bit of hair coming down. A little bit of wispy, curly, wavy. He's got these great cheekbones. Just want to make sure I don't overemphasize them, but at the same time, I don't want to flatten them out. I don't want to be haunted by Jimi Hendrix. Hey man, how come you how come you flatten out my cheekbones? It's the best part of me, man. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what he talked. How he talked. I'm a little giddy. I think I drank too much coffee again. Uh, okay. Concentrate, Brad. <laughs> Concentrate. Okay. So, let me continue with working on these edges, redefining them. So I'm got out of, got a little lost here and there and I just gotta pull them back in. And sometimes I use my finger to push the, the Conte into the paper a little bit more. I, I've been trying to get away from doing that as much as I was before. I think I was doing it too much and it was making the drawings a little bit um, glossy kind of look to it and less um, had less tech texture so I've been trying to be aware of that and avoid using too much uh, smudging with my fingers and rather letting the texture work to my advantage and just making it look more interesting. So I'm, I'm trying to be aware of that as I'm drawing one of the coolest dudes on the, that ever walked on the planet. So this edge right here is very soft. And where the light meets dark on the like on a form 
shadow is a good place to put some uh, texture in. It makes it look a little interesting, a little bit more um, aesthetically pleasing, I think. Uh, so I'm just using a little bit of uh, cross hatching by the using the tip of the pencil. I'm not a big cross hatching uh, person, and I don't have much experience with it. And I've been it's on my list of things to do in my that is sitting inside my brain. I have like this list of things to practice and. When the time is right, I'll uh, practice it and uh, try incorporating more uh, cross-hatching in my drawings. Cause when it's done well, it looks so good. I can't think of um, the guy's name right now, but anyway, there's there's a lot of artists out there who are really good at it. And, uh, I just need to watch some of their videos and look at some of their drawings and try to mimic it. Now I gotta be careful because you can really change somebody's expression pretty quick when you go into this area of the mouth like if you pull the lip up a little bit just a slight uh, lift in the lip on one side it's uh, expression of uh, resentment and disgust <laughs> so you gotta gotta uh, watch out and uh, look for those um, those uh, unintentional um, expressions when you're drawing and the funny thing is if you're I notice anyway like if I'm in a, a certain kind of mood sometimes the drawing of the person like they'll start taking on that that mood and the facial expressions and it's pretty wild uh, I read a, a few books or a couple books by uh, Professor uh, Paul Eichmann on facial expressions and and he did a lot of studies on it. And it's a really uh, interesting field of psychology on uh, facial expressions. I should put that on my book list. I don't think I have it on my uh, website yet on our um, bookshelf. I got a bunch of books on there that I really like and that I should put that one on there. I should do, write up, do like a little write up on it, a little book report. And these two, sh the uh, the mustache and that cast shadow, come pretty close to meeting, but not quite. I'm gonna sharpen up the cast shadow. making slight adjustments because now that I got the tone in I can see there's a lot more information now so with more information we make new decisions and so I'm making my adjustments as I need to
are we doing on time? 21? Alright, let's go ahead and take a break because it's been 20, about 20 minutes. And I'll be right back. So uh, I had noticed that I was dragging uh, my hand across and smudging a little bit and I just want to avoid that so I'm going to take some scrap paper tear off a piece and I'll use that to place my hand on so that I can um, try to avoid making a mess pull out some of this stuff, make me feel better, clean it up a bit. Oh, I forgot a little pocket of tone right there. You didn't tell me. How come you didn't tell me I forgot this? Uh, let's see, let's get that in there. straight sharp line so if you want to get like a really really dark straight line um, just as we, when we were holding our pencil on its side to make those thick streaks like that uh, at the same time if you pull this way you'll get one super dark straight very very clean line so you can go clean line and at the same time big fat streak and that's why I like um, this technique of sharpening the pencil like that. It's just so awesome. And uh, it's cool that they taught us that. And where was I? Oh yeah, I was working on his cash shadow on his neck. Okay. So I don't really like its shape that I have and I was trying to correct it. So I'm just going to very gently pull it out, pull some of that tone out of it. And it's very soft and delicate in this area. It's like a, as it wraps around and over the chin, the bone. And I finesse this edge here with the eraser. Sometimes the eraser is actually the drawing tool. You can actually draw with the eraser. It doesn't just get rid of mistakes. Soften that up. I'm just going to build up this tone darker. So I was thinking how I was going to do the hair is as I go in this way it becomes more dense and darker and it kind of just I like that look right now it's kind of like ghostly on the sides and just I just I don't know it looks pretty cool I think I'm going to go ahead and stay with that idea
Okay. So he's got, I mean, when you draw teeth, you don't want to go too crazy in the details because they will look pretty awful. But I'll do a little bit and then see how it looks. Very, very subtle. You really, you really got to be careful when you're uh, drawing like the, yeah, the shapes of the teeth. Because they can look like they just, I don't know, they just look really bad when they're, um, like the lines between the teeth are too, too distinct and sharp and, yeah, too much information, I guess, on the, in the teeth. Just, I don't know why it looks so, it can look so awful. I'm really trying to sharpen up this edge right here, the cast shadow in the corner of the mouth, and then kind of pull up with the pencil like this, kind of like that. See how it feathers and sharp right there, and then it feathers out? So I'm kind of doing that in the corner. facial hair on the side a little bit. bottom lip to, to build a, a, um, a supporting structure for the highlight that I'm going to pull out with this eraser. Okay, so I gotta stop it and change the battery apparently, so I'll be right back. Okay, so that was close. <laughs> I just happened to look over and saw that the uh, battery was going dead. It was blinking red at me, so I'm glad I got I uh, looked over my shoulder and saw that because I would have lost probably a lot of video coverage on the drawing. I was looking in the camera just now trying to see the image of the, uh, the drawing because when it's shrunken down on a screen much smaller you can see things that need to be worked on. I'm just going to try to clean him up a little bit and the tone is kind of like all over the place.
the side of the face will be in more not so much well it's in more shadow but also the light side will be a little bit more um, basically less light and I don't like the chin it needs a little work it looks okay but I just want to work on it a little bit So I squint down a lot too when I'm looking at the image and seeing what disappears. So like there's this little pocket of light right here and when I'm looking at the picture and I squint down, it disappears almost completely. And as I open my eyes up, I, it, it reappears. So it gives me an idea of how much tone to put in it. build up the tone in his nose so it'll support that highlight a little bit more. back to the nose and actually right here in the eye socket and eyebrow area
this spot right here is pretty important to get that feel of the nose and the three-dimensional aspect of it to kind of make this to make this crisp this line right here of the cast shadow so you want to kind of think about that There's, there's a shadow that comes off from his bangs on his forehead and creates very, very soft transition up at the top of his head here. So I, want, I really want that sense of wispy hair and shadow. really going to go dark in the eye here and that's going to give me something to work off of for the um, the tone on the rest of the drawing is the just so just go as dark as I can in the pupils and then I'll use that as a reference point for the rest of the uh, the drawing and the tone of the drawing um, let me zoom in a little bit and that's pretty good so I just need to fix this shape right here of the eye. Uh, and there's highlights you'll see and you're like, should I put that in, should I not? Let's just try it out and if you don't like it, you can take it back out. This one is, I might have to use a, uh, a different eraser to pull that highlight out because I think it got pretty uh, smudged up already so I might need to um, use one of my other other erasers Gosh, he's so young here. He doesn't even have um, that crease that comes off the uh, the muzzle. I, at least I don't even see it in the, the picture here. I forget that he was so young when he died. going to grab that eraser I was talking about and it's called Mono Zero by uh, Tombo and I'll put a link to it it's a really cool eraser let's see and so you can you know make it longer 
it just really gives you some power uh, control I think I used it in the last video as well and I'm going to use the edge of this paper to find if my eyes are lined up to the bottom of the nose and the corner of the lips and I can bring this edge up so right there boom I think this cold is, I think I got the flu this season and it is just holding on. It's really mild though. It hasn't kicked my ass yet. It's just uh, annoying as hell. But I always sound stuffed up when I'm talking, it's kind of funny. For a while, my voice was really jacked. Jacked as in like, sounds like I drank a lot of Jack. <laughs> Jack Daniels. I had a cool blues voice for a while. Sounded like I was like a 60 year old blues singer who's seen some stuff. Just, I'm just walking around the drawing. I'm going to cut into that eyebrow because there's a highlight right there. Exaggerate that. My screen just popped off. Let me turn that back on. I'm going to break that line right here in that cast shadow. Doesn't need to be all the way across. So I'm, I'm trying to get variation in uh, lines in my drawings now too. I've been trying to do that. Instead of just having one big straight line somewhere, um, try to vary the thickness and the shape and and how, you know, if it's soft, if it's firm, hard, whatever. Just trying to trying to find a different variation for um, to make a drawing look, you know, cool. Something fun to look at. That's basically what I'm trying to do. Something fun to look at. In this case. So I'm going to leave his face alone for right now and I'm going to go into his hand and catch it up to the tone that I have established above it. And I think what I was, what I, I'll still do is keep this uh, darker and more contrast and as I come down here it's kind of it's a little less contrast, it's not as dark, it's more soft, and we'll see what happens <laughs> with that. But before, actually, let me, let me zoom in on his hand. 
and try to indicate some of that ring on his finger. Exaggerate some of the shapes here. And he's got another ring on over here. I don't know. I think I'll just use simple line. Cause I can't really see very well in the picture what the heck it is. Here. I don't know. Something like that. It's so hard to see. concept that we had before where the light is less intense on objects further away from it so we'll put in some tone into the hand and there's some designs on a shirt that I am just going to completely ignore <laughs> I can argue that it's best for simplicity, but really it's just uh, self-preservation. <laughs> I don't want to lose my mind. Okay, so the camera uh, that's over my shoulder, it dictates uh, that I have to take a break because the memory can't keep up uh, when it's recording. It can only handle about 20, 21, maybe 25 at the max minutes. And then it just shuts off and that's frustrating. So I'd rather just uh, go to a break. Um, even though right now I don't want to take a break. I want to keep going. So I'm going to turn the camera off, let it um, do its thing and then uh, turn it back on. Unfortunately, I see some things wrong. The eyes are too low. And I already put in a lot of tone. So it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. It's like I was saying before, like you wanted to get everything uh, as right as possible in that uh, lay-in phase because once you go into the tone and try to make corrections there, it becomes difficult. So. I guess I'm giving you an example of such a problem. <laughs> so, rather than uh, uh, getting really frustrated with it, I'll just, uh, you know, just take it for what it is. And 
I think what happened was when I moved the nose up a little bit, I didn't take into consideration of moving the eyes as well. And just totally, totally forgot. And yeah, it's so I can really see it now. Really, really needs to be corrected. So I drew it once, I can draw it again. And this is all part of the learning process. So I'll go ahead and use my kneaded eraser to take out as much tone as I can. And I want to do it gently because the paper, I don't want to make the paper too rough. And the cool thing about this paper is that it allows you to erase pretty well. I mean, it's not going to, you're not going to be able to get it all out. Oh man, I love that eye too. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> this really hurts. Okay. And uh, so anyway, this paper is pretty good at letting you erase. Uh, it won't take it all out, but compared to other papers, it's pretty good. And I think the hairline also needs to go up. So kind of lost that. Since I'm moving the eye up, I definitely want to make sure the hairline is a little higher. Pretty big, pretty big things to correct. No doubt about that. With all the tone I put in. But I think I will be very happy that I did the corrections because I don't think I can get away with the way the eyes were. So it's probably probably about it's probably off by the a distance of an eyelid. So I just take a deep breath. draw it again kind of hurts quite a bit to lose to erase and lose some of that information that I put down I'm gonna have a hard time over here too because that highlight because now I'm moving it up and it's gonna fall mmm it might fall within the tone so I might We'll see how it goes. It might be a problem, it might not be. I'm hoping not, of course. But this will be worth it. Because that was a pretty, pretty, uh, it was pretty, what do you call it? Proportions were off. Eyes were way too low. That means the eyebrow will be higher as well.
it's going to look messy until I can get things positioned where I want them. So I'll just take this straight edge off the paper to quickly line up where I'm going to put the, uh, the eye on the other side. Probably like that. Make sure the nose is lined up, the lips. <clears throat> Definitely a bummer, <laughs> but that's the way it goes. And uh, not much else to say about it. I'm glad I saw it finally. sure I got that. Well, let's go back here. Make sure that's lined up. Put in the tone so I can really see what's going on. And the highlight about right there. And the eyebrow. to do some reshaping of the shapes in the nose as well. It already looks better. Already looks better. So I'm glad I went ahead jumped in and before I can think about it too much go ahead and destroy what I have put down before because it already looks already looks more like him it was just so off I, it's pretty funny I love taking breaks it, I'm gonna take more breaks from now on because that yeah I don't think I would have saw that I would have just kept on with it if I wasn't taking breaks all right that was a that was a good lesson in self-control of temper and and to take breaks
So you can still see a little bit of the lines that were not able to erase completely. So I'm filling in around them a little with a little bit of tone so they can those lines completely disappear. Oh, nearly completely anyway. At least enough where they're not a distraction. Okay, what else do I need to do? Make sure my eyes are straight. Okay, I'm gonna take a parallel line from the corner of the mouth. And it lines up to about right there. So it actually looks pretty good. Oh, it looks so much better. It just feels like, like if my eyes can make a sound, it would go, oh, like, <laughs> like, oh, yes, much better. Thank you for doing that. It was hurting my eyes. Let's see, let's take out some of this tone. All this noise. Flatten this out a little bit. Okay. Now I'm looking at the hairline. And I'll come back and uh, work on the eyes a little bit more. Let's see. Again, with kind of wispy, wispy hair, very soft. And on this side of the head, I'm trying to turn the form by using some tone. Boy, this one's quite a challenge, huh? Let's see. Good exercise. It made the edge a little too hard. Soften it up. <clears throat> I really like the texture. It's starting to develop on him. It looks really good. Let's 
see. I'm gonna work on this jawline while I'm looking at it. Soften up the neck. Transitions in the shadows. Feeling a lot better about it, that's for sure. So let's go back into the eyes. Um, let's look at the eyebrow. Get that really dark spot of the eyebrow, where it's tucked under side of the um, brow bone, and then it lightens up when it reaches, kind of like on the outside a little bit of that brow, the light hits it a little bit more. the nostrils. I think I need to work on their shape. I don't have them quite the right shape.
I'm just trying to think of the forms that I'm looking at and like soft transitions, especially in the shadows around this area. It's very subtle uh, plane changes as light kind of curves around the form and into the dark like patches under the eyes. So I was trying to think of how that transition looks and the shape and also um, like the hardness of the line like if, it, if it's going to be a soft smooth transition or a really crisp one so I'm just alright so my video just cut off because I ran out of memory space so I had to take care of that but only took a couple minutes so where was I? I think I was working on the eye. So anyway, back to that. Actually, there is a little highlight in this eye. It's so tiny. It's very light. But I like to put it in. I can always take it out if I don't like it. So right here, if you can see some of that leftover lower eyelid from before, so I'm, I'm going to grab my Tough Stuff eraser. Tough Stuff, really awesome. Gets the auto jams. And I am going to see if I can pull out some of that, some of that, um, mistake I made. Ah, uh, I love this eraser. That's beautiful. Alright. So yeah, tough stuff. Great, great little racer to have. I put that back. Blow off the racer bits. Let's see. Let's uh, move back and see what we got so far.
keep that highlight right there on the forehead, right above the eyebrow, pretty strong and clean. Highlight bounces off the upper eyelid. pretty good some, some highlight over here on the other eyelid <clears throat> and let's put some more tone on the side of the face to show that plain change the transition the light intensity is less. It's a bit of a plane right here. So here's the top and then it kind of curves down, creates a little triangle shape on the cheek. This line is a little intense. I need to knock it down. Same with this one over here. So when I squint down, um, like right now I'm at a half squint. I'm looking at the drawing and I can see certain, uh, <laughs> certain lines that are a little bit darker and, or uh, too crisp and they're they're taking too much attention because I can see them very clearly when I squint. So I'll, when I see those, I'll make the decision to uh, to knock them down, as in uh, take away the tone or soften the edge to lessen the amount of ten attention that they're getting from my eyes. Um, so that's basically what the. Uh, the idea is with the squinting. This edge right here needs to be softened because the form on his jaw is actually wrapping around. And so that edge should be softer to show that. And it's, so that half tone will right here will connect with the uh, the half tone shadow underneath the uh, um, bottom lip. And I still don't want to, I'm trying to avoid smudging too much. I'll use a little bit at, for my advantage, but um, I don't want to, I'm trying to get away from that a little bit and using texture, like a little bit cross hatching and just leaving the, the pencil to do its thing instead of trying to go in afterwards and smudging around with my finger. So it's kind of experimenting with that right now. He's looking way better than before. Oh my goodness. This is a really long drawing video, probably, I guess. But I am not going to worry about it. I'm going to let it take as long as it needs. And just enjoy it.
Okay. Where else should I go? Should I go darker in certain areas? Hmm. All good questions. play with the uh, tone in the hair a little bit. eyebrow up a tad. got it a little too dark in this corner. As I was thinking, pretty dark, good contrast in this area, and as I go down, the contrast and the tone uh, decreases. So I want to leave the drawing looking like a drawing, like uh, you know, a little sketchy maybe, a little unfinished. this hair piece, this little curl, nice and clean. Here, crisp that up a little bit. So at this point, I'm just like flying all over the place. So once I fix one spot, I'll see another one. That'll now take center stage and I'll go in and knock that down. I'm gonna work on Excuse me. I'm gonna work on this uh, medallion some more. I 
actually I'll just cover it connect that to the shadow of the hand So I was trying to figure out uh, how I wanted to work this area and I don't really like putting that much information in this spot. So I'll just pull it back out and I'm just going to ghost this whole side in a little bit by pulling out the tone, dragging my eraser down. I think that's good. I can work in the hand area a little bit more if I want to. Uh, I think it's pretty much almost done, really. I, mean, I can work more in the uh, shape, like um, like more texture and stuff in the hand, or I can kind of leave it the way it is. I kind of like it like that. Might make it a little bit darker in tone. Break some of these lines up to kind of connect that to the atmosphere around it. If you're wondering, that's my wife singing. trying to put some texture in it but not too much but I kind of want something a little bit more in that area
Maybe make that a little bit darker right there on that knuckle. So coming up on the end of this, I think, and it was a journey. <laughs> Got a lot of uh, a lot of challenges along the way, and I'm sure I won't be happy with it ever. I never, I'm never happy with completely happy with drawings or paintings, pretty much anything I ever do. But that's just my personality, and I think a lot of people are like that. But um. Yeah, I, you know, oh, I gotta pull out this highlight, that'd be kind of cool, like right here on the ring, maybe some over here on this ring, I think I learned a lot on this one. Let's see. So I'm going to take a break and finish it up. I just put in some of these chains. I was going to leave them out, but I just want to give a little sense of them existing. I don't want them to take away too much from the, the drawing. So let me grab my little tiny eraser here. And I can pull out a little bit of these highlights that are on the chain, but not too much, just a little bit. Pull out this highlight that was on the ring, nice and crisp. Yeah, it takes away, takes too much attention down from the face. So I'm gonna kind of push it down a little bit in tone.
Let's go in the medallion and pull out some highlights real quick. leave that <laughs> I can go and get lost and get lost in the uh, the fun of it all okay I like how this has a lot of light and the shadow kind creates like a hollow shadow but I'm gonna push it down a little bit I don't want to lose it completely because I like that you get sometimes you get a lot of reflective light up into the shadow on the neck on the other side and I, I like that So I guess that's it. It's um, quite a long drawing for a video anyway, but I do enjoy it. And thank you guys for stopping by and checking it out. I really appreciate it. And I'm gonna keep picking at it probably, but let me pull that highlight out. Highlight out. Highlight <laughs> out right here and make it a little bit smaller. And this one is much smaller and softer. Yeah, so let's um let's go ahead and call it. How does it look on the camera here? Eh, not bad. Not too bad. It is a lot better than it would have been if I didn't catch that uh, problem we are having with the eyes earlier. Because I had moved that nose up and then, then I didn't change the placement of the eyes. So that caused a lot of problems. And we fixed it. It would have been much easier to fix if we had caught that problem earlier when it was in the laying phase but it is what it is and it's a good lesson and it's, it's all fun and as you can see I can't stop so yeah <laughs> I'm just going to put in some, I like this eraser because you can do a little bit of cross hatching with it and drawing of course and it's kind of cool. So I'm just going to go in and create some texture, break some lines. And just have, have a little fun with it. really soft on this draw so that would help to have some cross hatching
All right. Thank you for watching. I'm going to try to end it now and uh, not keep noodling at it and move on to the next one. And yes, yeah, it's so it's so hard to let go. So um, thanks again for watching, and see you guys later. Bye.